Well then, good morning to everyone who's watching this. Uh, today is my birthday, so I've got nothing really better to be doing this morning. I didn't have anything planned, uh, and I've got the day off from work. So I thought I would just uh, record and put together another video. So, um, we're just going to go back on everything that I've taught so far, and we're just going to make our very, very first TNT cannon. So this is going to be pretty basic. It's just going to be a basic little cannon that just fires TNT. I'm not going to worry about sand or anything else. So the first thing that we're going to think about is what do we want to do? So we want to shoot TNT forts. That's pretty much it. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have two pieces of TNT sort of like that. So we can have like a little barrel here. Speed one. So in saying that, what we're going to do is if we want a lot of TNT in this little area here, we are going to have to um, run some redstone. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to plan this out first. So that's what I want to be shooting there. I'm just going to put a ladder there. So a ladder will basically block TNT from traveling through it. So if you shoot TNT at a ladder and you hit the side of the ladder, it's going to stay still. So I've got that ladder there. Um, so therefore, when I say push all this TNT forts here, it's going to end up there and you're gonna have a very, very nice arc. You can see that there's like, while TNT can sit on a ladder, uh, you can see that the TNT has a very, very good view of the other piece of TNT. So it's 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 something called exposure, um, which is sort of like a measure of like how much power a piece of TNT gets. Uh, this has a lot of exposure because you can see there's a lot of air between um, there. Whereas if I put something say like a slab, This TNT is going to fall on the slab and you're actually going to get less exposure uh, because that's like a piece of solid um, solid stone there effectively. Um, so you're going to get very, very low uh, exposure. Now a different different setup is a trapdoor, which you're going to get uh, much higher exposure. But when this TNT falls down here, uh, it's going to be, a, the arc is going to be a lot more flat basically. So it's just going to shoot just above the ground all the way along. So in this scenario here, we're going to use a ladder. And with that being said, we'll just hop straight into it. So, if we think about how do we get a lot of TNT here quickly, we are going to basically use pieces of TNT to push pieces of TNT. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll recall in the last video that the explosion sort of radius of TNT is six blocks. And then we're going to have one here. So, basically, what I'm thinking of now is I'm going to use this TNT here to push all of this TNT forwards up to here, which in turn will fire this TNT out the front. So, we'll just have another bit of a look, make sure that that's all gonna work. And then now, what I tend to do is after like, starting to plan it out, I'm just gonna place some dispensers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got four rows of six, which is 24 TNT. So we're going to try and push 24 TNT all into this one block just here. So to do that, I'm just going to place some more dispensers just like this. And great, that's got our little dispenser set up now. So um, with that, we'll just work on wiring everything up. So, because I want this uh, booster here to go off a little bit earlier than everything else, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna run the redstone around the top of the booster. So this redstone line here, uh, if you recall the last episode, when you soft, not the last episode, but one of the previous episodes, when you soft power this block here, it's gonna power like everything around in a little star. So it's gonna power this block here. It won't power that dispenser. It's going to power the block underneath it. And with this redstone here, it's gonna power the block underneath it and so on. So redstone on top of a dispenser like this is going to um, power itself and the block underneath it. it does get a bit uh, a bit screwy a bit later on. Uh, I won't cover that here because it ultimately doesn't matter too much. So now what I've done is I've just placed two repeaters here. So I've got um, this section will go off first and then four ticks, uh, four redstone ticks or 0.4 of a second after, this section will go off here. So what's going to happen is this will go off, push everything forwards into this ladder here, and then this bit's going to go off, shooting that TNT out the front. So, got that little setup. 
And now we're going to worry about actually firing the TNT. So let's go with three dispensers here. So this is our scatter. This is what we're firing at the wall and what's going to be, say, destroying the wall. Let's do that. I'm just going to very, very quickly use slash slash replace to change all that bedrock there for cobblestone. Replace bedrock cobblestone. Boom. That's a very powerful command. It's one you want to learn slash slash replace. And we're just going to place a block there and we'll build ourselves a little barrel. Ultimately, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. I'll get like more into like the physics of TNT uh, a bit later on. Uh, but you can see that this is a pretty, it's a pretty small cannon. So, yeah, I won't worry about water just yet. So, one of the cool things about crystal um, is it has something called protection blocks. So, certain blocks above bedrock um, will stop TNT from doing damage inside of them. It's particularly handy when you're first prototyping a cannon and you don't want to like test water at the same time. Um, so Bedrock is one of these protection blocks. So you can see here that now everything is like protected above this area. And we're pretty much good to just give this guy a little fire. So we slash TNT fill. And now we press this button. These dispensers will go up first, these second, and then these third. One, two, three. So you can see it crams everything up at the front here and then you get 24 pieces of TNT in a block effectively. These all go off simultaneously, and then it just fires that TNT out the front. You can actually see, that's the range we've got there. Uh, if you do want to extend the range, you can just um, add more delay between your power here and this set of dispensers here. Um, but I'm quite happy with the range on this thing, so you won't bother that, and it's going to be a little bit larger as well. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to test it out. So we run another command, slash slash stack. This will uh, stack the selected region in the direction you specify by the amount you specify as well. So I've done slash slash, slash stack 10. So it's stacking 10 blocks up. So it's just done 10 up there. So we fire it again. Two, three. Pop. There we go. Nice little hole in the wall there. So, with that being said, this is pretty much your very, very first cannon. Now, before we can actually use this on Complex, uh, because Complex does not have protection blocks, we need to uh, remove the protection blocks. Now, in the last video that I said, I said that, um, or the last video that I posted, I said that TNT does not do damage in water. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna abuse that here so we can protect our cannon from blowing itself up. So if we get some TNT, and we physically think about how um, how our TNT is going to be exploding, we know we've got TNT exploding here, because this is the booster, and we also know there's no TNT exploding in the middle here, because this goes off and pushes this all forwards. We do have TNT exploding here though. In the barrel, this is all getting shot out, so we shouldn't have TNT exploding here. So now what we need to think about is, so we have an explosion here, an explosion here, and we're just going to water it. And we're just going to put something straight in the middle. And that will actually cover both spots where the TNT explodes. So now, uh, we do have no protection blocks up or underneath it. Uh, before we do fire, what we are going to do is we are going to take a skem. So go slash up one. And I'm going to use slash slash copy. That will copy the region. I'm just going to go across a little bit. And then run slash slash paste. So that's the exact same cannon. I've just moved it a bit away, um, and I would usually put bedrock underneath that as well, just so you can't uh, blow it up with a little explosion. And we are now ready to test the cannon uh, when it is watered. There's slash slash stack 10 down, so just to repair the wall there. See, that's, that's nice and repaired. And we're just going to fire again. That's a visual glitch, that. There we go. So you can see, cannon's completely intact and the wall is no longer intact. So we know this cannon here works now. We're confident to use this on complex. So now we're gonna go about how we actually get this over to complex. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this button. So I'm actually gonna place the button up here. Uh, this is this is a personal thing that I like to do. I like to have, it, uh, to have my cannons like as small as they can possibly be. Um, so what I've done is because I know that um, that's going to be like slightly out of the area of the cannon. Um, I've just placed that there. 
instead. So, I'm going to hop into Lightmatica now. So, hotkey is M. I'm going to go into Area Editor. I'm just going to move those both to me. And then, I think, right click. Is that the right way? Okay. So, we've got the Area Editor. Um, it is only selecting that one block bit. This is your, like, your bottom corner, effectively. So you need to set two corners for a region in Lightmatica. So you got your bottom, bottom left or bottom right back corner, I guess. And we're going to do the top left forwards corner as well. So we're just going to hop up here, area editor. So I've moved both of those coordinates to me. So now I can just move one to me. I don't need to worry about which one it is. You can see now that it has physically moved the box around the cannon. However, it's one block, um, one block taller than it needs to be. So we're just going to hop in our area editor here, and we're just going to lower it by one. And now you can see that everything is sort of tucked into this little area. Uh, we have this button here. If the button was on the back of this dispenser here, the skem actually wouldn't save it. Uh, it would ignore this button because it is out of the region. But since I moved this button all the way up to the top here, it no longer counts that as... Um, or it counts it as being in the region, and therefore we are able to save it. So, just going to go in area editor. So we're confident we've got the whole cannon skimmed. Um, I would double check everything, make sure you got the whole area skimmed, and then you're going to click save schematic. Now we're just going to name this uh, snow. Uh, let's go dry. Or snow tutorial dry dry scatter. Now I'm actually going to have a link to each of the cannons that I do in this tutorial series uh, in the bottom of the uh, description of this video. Um, and yeah, apart from that, that's our very, very first cannon. Now, um, before I need to do this in any other videos, I'm going to show you how to load a cannon in Lightmatica. So say, this is someone's wall here. Stack 10 up. Now we want to destroy this wall. This is on complex now. We're just going to pretend that this is on complex. I could do it on complex. I really just cannot be bothered. Um, currently taking a bit of a detox from complex because I'm a bit too toxic on there for the moment. But if we load the dry scatter, so snow tutorial dry scatter, and we click on the bottom left, load schematic, we now have our little schematic loaded. There's, a, there's an option that says uh, render layers um, in the configuration menu. Uh, I generally do layer by layer, but that's kind of down to personal preference how you want to build your own cannons. That just simply changes like the way that the layers are rendering. Now we can see here that if the wall's there and the cannon is facing that way, we are not going to be hitting that wall. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go M, loaded schematics, unload that one, uh, click on schematic placements in the bottom left, Configure, top right, and we're physically going to rotate that cannon around until it faces the right direction. Now we're just going to shuffle it a little bit to the side using the X, um, the X toggle there. And now we have our little lightmatic pointing towards that wall there. Now what we're going to do is, uh, this is down to completely down to personal preference, you don't have to do it like this. I personally like to build my cannons from the ground up. Um, most of my skims are built so it's easier to build from the ground up. Um, and yeah, we'll just hop straight into it. So at the moment, you can see all the light blue blocks. That's where blocks are missing. So we're just placing all of these blocks in on the bottom layer. Now, uh, you will notice when you do start building a cannon, you're going to have uh, blocks that look different. They're going to be in different colors than the lightmatic. So your first color is pretty much going to be orange. Now, orange, it refers to the right block, but the wrong rotation or the wrong state. So you can see that this uh, dispenser is physically facing the wrong way. It's facing forwards, it's not facing to the side. So it, the Lightmatic is lighting up and saying that, hey, it is pointing in the wrong direction. So you can change that over. Five. Next one that I will cover as well um, is the wrong block. So when it lights up red, that means the wrong block is uh, currently loaded in the skim. So, uh, generally you never want that. 
for the most part, like orange blocks. If it's like not a dispenser, it's like redstone or something. It just might be powered, and you just haven't built the part of the schematic that's powered it yet. Um, that's for the most part, like where most of the problems arise with the orange blocks. Okay, so we just place the water there. You can see the water flows all the way to the end. And now you can see that we've got no orange blocks, no blue blocks, no red blocks. So we're just going to raise the skem up. I have a hotkey set to physically raising up the skem. And we'll just quickly speed through this layer here. Not doing this particularly quickly because I don't really need to. It's a fucking Tuesday morning. Um, but yeah, anyway. So now we've got that second layer built. Uh, one thing that I will cover here is there are purple blocks as well. Purple blocks just mean there is a block existing where air should be existing. Um, generally, you don't really want purple blocks unless you know you're going to be doing it in the scam. So clear those. And yep, you can see that the bottom three layers there, or the bottom two layers, sorry, are all good. So we're going to raise it up again. This is the redstone layer here. Uh, what I'm using pretty heavily here is I'm using the middle click. Oh, I'm lagging. Lagging something stupid. Uh, I'm using the middle click uh, button here to pick the block um, in the scam. So I'm getting some absolutely crazy lag. We've got 500 milliseconds right now. Anyway, it's all good. And yeah, we've placed that layer there. We can just double check that. Nothing's lighting up, nothing's wrong. Raise it up again. Place that in, that in. And then we've got the cobblestone and the button. And now we are pretty much done. So what we're gonna do is configuration menu. What I like to do finally is I'll shift the render layers into all. That will show the entirety of the cannon um, when you've got something wrong. But yeah, you can see that that is now pretty good. So there's no missing blocks, there's no wrong blocks, nothing of that sort. Um, so now we're pretty much just good to fire. So what we're going to do is we're going to TNT fill it, and then we are going to physically fire it. That is just a visual glitch there. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. But yeah, you can see we've got a nice hole in the wall, and the cannon is completely intact. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, for the most part, um, this has just been like a quick rundown on uh, Lightmatica and building your very, very first cannon. Uh, so if you don't understand how like any part of this cannon works, or you don't understand certain parts of the cannon, uh, go back through my previous videos. Um, and yeah, because I've covered how every mechanic in this cannon works uh, over the past three videos, except for exposure, uh, but I will get to that in a later video. But apart from that, yeah, that's it. That's that's your very, very first cannon. So congratulations if you got it this far. Um, if you somehow managed to screw this up, I'm, I'm worried for your future. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what video I'm going to be doing next time. Um, I'll probably give it another couple days. And then I'll smash out another one. So yeah, I'll catch you all later.